The major aspect of physical development in adolescence is puberty. So let's discuss some of the signs of physical maturation. Puberty really consists of two changes that mark the change from childhood to young adulthood. First, we see physical changes. So dramatic increases in height, weight, and changes in the body's fat and muscle content. Um, next, we also see sexual maturation. So these are changes in the reproductive organs that mark sexual maturity, as well as secondary sexual characteristics, like body and facial hair and the growth of breasts. So let's um, start by talking more about this first change right here. Um, this is that, that physical growth. So what's going on in adolescence? Well, during the adolescent growth spurt, females gain as much as 15 pounds a year and boys gain as much as 17 pounds a year. Now, if you guys remember from middle childhood, we said that girls actually begin the growth spurt before boys. So girls begin that adolescent growth spurt about two years before boys. During this growth spurt, muscle fibers are becoming thicker and denser, heart and lung capacity are increasing, and we see that this is more so for boys than it is for girls. We also see that body fat increases, and this is going to be more so for girls than it is for boys. And the reason for this is that the body is starting to be able to prepare to bear children. So the second type of change we discussed was sexual maturation. Now, sexual maturation occurs in a predictable sequence and it includes two key changes. So we see primary sex characteristics and these are the organs of reproduction, the organs directly involved in reproduction. So we see changes here with the primary sexual characteristics. Um, and we also see changes in those secondary sex characteristics. Now these are the physical signs of maturity that are not directly linked to the reproductive organs. So we see um, when it, in terms of sexual maturation, you we can break it down between primary sex characteristics and then secondary sex characteristics. Now for girls, puberty begins with these changes in those secondary sex characteristics. So puberty begins with the growth of breasts and then the adolescent growth spurt and then menarche. And menarche is the onset onset of menstruation. So basically it's your first period. So this typically occurs around age 13 for girls. Um, for boys, puberty again begins with those changes in the secondary sex characteristics. So it starts with the growth of the testes and the scrotum, followed by the appearance of pubic hair, then the adolescent growth spurt, and then the growth of the penis. Um, this is again around 13 years of age is when most boys will reach spermarchy. And this is the first spontaneous ejaculation of sperm containing fluid. So basically it's the first wet dream. So while we think of puberty as involving these physical changes in adolescence, there's definitely a psychological component to puberty. Um, these changes are happening very rapidly, and so it can be difficult to adjust to those changes. So we see that body image um, becomes a big thing in adolescence. I think this is probably true for everyone. If you think back to your time in adolescence, um, adolescents in general are much more concerned about their overall appearance than they've ever been. Girls tend to worry more than boys about their appearance, and they're more likely to be dissatisfied with their appearance. Um, so this is going to be especially true when friends are often discussing their appearance. 
boys are a little bit different. Boys, um, they're going to be more unhappy with their appearance when they expect to have like an that ideal body image, but they don't. So if they're expecting to have um, a lot of muscle to be really tall and then they're not, this is when boys are going to be more likely to be displeased with their appearance. But compared to girls, boys are more likely to be pleased with their appearance. Um, so the big difference here is girls compare themselves to each other and boys compare themselves to that ideal um, male body image. So peers aren't the source of displeasure for boys, whereas for girls, girls are the source of displeasure often. Um, this is a really terrible story, but I'm sure... Well, I'm sure many girls have something, hopefully, not hopefully actually, because it's a terrible story, but maybe something that is similar to this when you look back to um, maybe like body image in adolescence. So I remember being in eighth grade and I was at a birthday party and it was a sleepover and all of the girls sat in a circle and everyone had a piece of paper and you wrote your name on the, on the top of the paper and then you wrote different body parts and it like it got as specific as like um eyebrows eyes nose lips legs stomach i mean like at all these different body parts and then you'd pass your paper to the person next to you and everyone would rank each person on a scale of one to ten Okay, so this was a terrible idea. By the end of the night, there were lots of tears. Um, but this is also, <laughs> it's unfortunately a good example of how girls perceive their appearance. And again, they're more likely to compare themselves to each other. Girls and boys also differ in their responses to menarche and spermarche. Um, girls usually will tell their moms first, and then they might tell their friends after two or three menstrual periods. Um, you know, even in more traditional societies, menarche is publicly celebrated. Uh, this is not the case in industrialized ones. There's a lot less that's known about boys' reactions to spermarche. Um, boys tend to feel more positive if they're prepared for it, so they, they know in what a wet dream is and what it means, uh, but they're rarely going to tell their parents or their friends about it. So adolescents are thought to be extremely moody, um, and evidence indicates that yes, adolescents are moodier than children or adults. We see that there are rapid increases in hormones, um, and this is related to greater irritability and impulsivity, but it's actually not related to that greater moodiness. Um, hormones are really not what's responsible for teenage moodiness. Mood shifts are more often associated with changes in activities or social settings. Um, so teens are more likely to report being in a good mood when they're with their friends um, rather than um, their rather than more adult regulated settings. So again, if you guys look back and you think back to your adolescent years, you know, you have a lot going on when you're an adolescent. I mean, you're probably in school from about eight to three, and then maybe you stay after for extracurricular activities, and then you come home and you have dinner, and then you have to do homework. So the idea is that adolescents have a lot on their plate, and so this is probably more the reason for moodiness than, than the uh, changes in hormones. We also know that the rate of maturation can affect um, individuals differently. So puberty begins at age 10 in the average girl and age 12 in the average boy. So an early maturing boy might begin puberty at age 11, whereas a late maturing boy might start at age 15 or 16. And then an early maturing girl might start puberty at age nine, whereas a late maturing girl might start at 14 or 15. Now maturing early or late has psychological consequences that differ for boys and girls. So if you guys just take a minute to think about what would you expect, you know, think about for girls first, do you think it would be better to be early maturing or late maturing? 
What we see is that it's typically better for a girl to be late maturing rather than early. Um, Girls who mature early often lack self-confidence and they tend to be less popular. They're more likely to be depressed and have behavior problems. They're more likely to smoke and drink. So early maturation can really have a life-changing effect on early maturing girls. They might be pressured into sex earlier. They might become mothers while they're still teenagers. You know, on the other hand, if you're a boy, would you rather be early maturing or late maturing? Well, for a boy, you guys, it's probably better to be early maturing because you don't want to be like the only boy in your class who still talks way up here, right? Like you want to mature early because if you mature early, that also means that you're probably going to be better at sports than your other friends. Um, You're going to look more like that ideal male body image. So early maturing boys tend to date more often and they have more positive feelings about their physical development and athletic abilities. Um, So one of the reasons that we see these differences, um, you can think about really what is the ideal body image for, for men versus for women. I mean, I think we're starting to see a cultural shift in that for women, the ideal body image is there, there's more um, t- body types that are considered to be very attractive now than maybe 10 years ago. But the idea is that girls want to be thin. They want to be smaller. They want to be skinny. And so you're more likely to look at look like that if you haven't yet sexually matured. Um, for boys, they want to be bigger. They want to have muscle. So you're more likely to look like that if you have matured early. So this is part of the reason why we see these differences. Um, So again, just a recap here, early maturing boys tend to be popular, confident, independent, have a positive body image, whereas late maturing boys might be less popular, they might be anxious, really talkative, they have a negative body image. Early maturing girls are not as popular. They might be withdrawn and have low self-confidence. They've got a negative body image um, and more they're, they're subject to more long-term problems. Whereas late maturing girls tend to be more popular. They tend to be more sociable, lively, leaders in their school, and they have a more positive body image.